Welcome to Vango Notes for Human Resource Management, 11th edition, by Gary Dessler. Chapter 5, Personnel Planning and Recruiting. Section 1, Big Ideas. Have you ever eaten at the Cheesecake Factory? With 110 restaurants in business and 20 more opening each year, the Cheesecake Factory's managers must attract and hire 24,000 people per year. That's a lot of recruits. And they're not going to find all of the people they need from one source. So having the right recruiting sources is crucial to the Cheesecake Factory's success. But how do human resource managers determine the right recruiting sources? Well, the recruitment and selection process is actually made up of a series of hurdles that human resource managers must jump over. Let's take a look at each of these. The recruitment and selection process starts with employment and personnel planning. This is the process of actually deciding what positions the firm will have to fill and how to fill them. Personnel planning includes all future positions, from maintenance clerk to CEO. However, most firms call the process of deciding how to fill executive jobs succession planning. Employment planning is based on the firm's strategic plans. For example, a firm may strategically decide to expand its operations, meaning it will also need to expand its number of employees. So, the human resource team will need to plan whom to hire, how to screen applicants, and when to put these plans into place. Now, assuming the company authorizes you to fill a position, the next step is to develop an applicant pool through recruiting. Employee recruiting means finding or attracting applicants for your open positions. It's hard to overemphasize the importance of effective recruiting. For instance, if only two candidates apply for two job openings, you'll have little choice but to hire them. But if 10 or 20 applicants apply for each job, you can use techniques like interviews and tests to screen out all but the most qualified. Effective recruiting is more than just placing newspaper ads or calling employment agencies. Several issues come into play. First, recruitment efforts need to fit the company's strategic plans. Second, some recruiting methods are better than others. So, human resource managers must be diligent about picking the best method for the job for which they're recruiting. Third, your success in recruiting depends heavily on some non-recruitment issues and policies. For example, paying 10% more than most firms in your community should help you build a bigger applicant pool faster. Finally, employment law dictates what managers can and cannot do. Numerous federal, state, and local laws and court decisions restrict your recruiting activities. For instance, employers can't rely on their current employees to spread the word about job openings if the workforce is substantially female, say, or all Hispanic. Relying on word of mouth here could severely limit the required diversity of the applicant pool. When you think of recruiting, you probably think of Monster.com, employment agencies, and classified ads. But internal sources and current employees are often the best source of candidates. Sometimes, filling positions with internal candidates is the best recruiting approach. For example, you already know the strengths and weaknesses of these employees. They may be more committed to your company if they're rewarded with promotions, and they should require less orientation and training than outsiders. However, hiring from within can backfire if employees who apply for the jobs and don't get them become discontented. Despite the advantages, firms can't always get all the employees they need from their current staff, and sometimes they just don't want to. In this instance, they need other sources to find candidates. Let's look at these. Most people today go online to look for jobs. So, employers are learning to use the Internet as a recruiting source. For instance, the Cheesecake Factory gets about a third of its management applicants through the web. In general, the web is a cost-effective way to publicize openings. It generates more responses more quickly and for a longer time at less cost than just about any other method. Unfortunately, Internet recruiting is often too much of a good thing and employers may end up deluged with resumes. One solution is to post detailed job duties listings, so those not qualified need not apply. But while web-based recruiting is rapidly replacing help-wanted ads, 
a quick look at almost any paper confirms that print ads are still very popular. In using help wanted ads, employers must determine the most appropriate advertising medium and how to write the best advertisement. The main goal is to target your ads where you'll reach the best prospective employees. And sometimes the best way to reach applicants is to use an employment agency. There are three main types of employment agencies. Public agencies operated by federal, state, or local governments. Agencies associated with nonprofit organizations and privately owned agencies. To get the most out of working with them, human resource managers should give agencies an accurate and complete job description. Make sure tests, application blanks, and interviews are part of the agency's selection process. Periodically review equal employment opportunity data on candidates accepted or rejected by the agency. Closely screen the agency and. Supplement the agency's reference checking by checking the final candidate's references themselves. To help reduce recruitment problems, employers are increasingly supplementing their permanent workforces by hiring contingent or temporary workers, often through temporary help employment agencies. And today's contingent workforce isn't limited to clerical or maintenance staff. It also includes thousands of engineering, science, and management support occupations. Many firms use temporary hiring to give prospective employees a trial run before hiring them as regular employees. Let's look at one final source of external candidates you may already be familiar with: college recruiting. College recruiting puts an employer's representatives on college campuses to pre-screen applicants and create an applicant pool from the graduating class. This is an important source of management trainees and professional and technical employees. Unfortunately, college recruiting is expensive and time-consuming, so employers must choose their recruiters and the schools they go to very carefully. By now, you should see that some recruitment sources produce higher-quality candidates overall. That's why companies often use multiple sources. For example, the Cheesecake Factory uses four recruiting sources: employee referrals, promotion of current employees, search firms. And online job postings. Regardless of the method they choose, companies must remember that it's unlawful to discriminate against any individual because of race, color, religion, sex, national origin, or age. Effective and legal recruitment provides a company with the largest pool of qualified applicants from which to choose the best future employee. That's the end of this section. Section two, practice questions. Okay, now that we've reviewed the chapter, let's see how much you've retained. I'll give you a series of multiple choice, true, false, and essay questions to think about. After a few seconds for each, I'll give you the correct answer and an explanation. Let's start with multiple choice. Ready? Question one. Managers can use several simple tools for projecting human resource needs, including trend analysis, scatter plots, and a ratio analysis, or b forecast analysis. The answer is a ratio analysis. For example, if a salesperson traditionally generates five hundred thousand dollars in sales, then assuming the salesperson ratio remains the same. You would require six new salespeople next year to produce an estimated three million dollars in sales. Question two: Computerized skill inventories include employee information such as product knowledge, work experience, and a formal education, or b compensation grade. The answer is a formal education. Computerized skill inventories contain all kinds of information about the employee's background, experience, and skills. Question three: When using advertising to attract job candidates, human resource managers must consider the advertising medium and a the job profile or b the ad's construction. The answer is b. The job ad must be constructed to attract potential candidates' attention, generate interest in the position, create desire for the job, and spur the job candidate to actively pursue the job. 
Question 4. The workforce is becoming increasingly diverse. Based on greater participation of groups like older workers, disabled workers, minorities, and A. single parents, or B. white males. The answer is A. single parents. In fact, about two thirds of all single parents are in today's workforce. This group represents an important source of job candidates. Okay, let's try a few true false questions. Question 5. Executive recruiters are also sometimes referred to as headhunters. True or false? The answer is true. Executive recruiters or headhunters are special employment agencies retained by employers to seek out top management talent for their clients. Question 6. Employers may request detailed information on a job applicant's arrest record history. True or false? The answer is false. The courts have usually held that employers violate Title VII by disqualifying applicants because of an arrest. This criterion has had an adverse impact on minorities, and employers usually can't show it's required by business necessity. Question 7. Employers will probably have no choice but to hire older workers in the future. True or false? The answer is true. Over the next few years, the fastest growing labor force segment will be those from 45 to 64 years old. And it's not just the workforce. The overall population is getting older as well. Question 8. Internet recruiting typically provides employers with an extremely diverse applicant pool. True or false? The answer is false. Fewer older people and members of certain minorities use the Internet, so online application gathering may inadvertently exclude higher numbers of these workers. Question 9. What are the three main types of employment agencies? The three main types of employment agencies are public agencies operated by federal, state, or local governments, Agencies associated with nonprofit organizations and privately owned agencies. Last one, question 10. Name some possible methods for choosing internal sources for potential job candidates. Some possible methods for choosing internal sources for potential job candidates are rehiring, job posting, and succession planning. That's the end of this section. Section 3, Key Terms. Okay, now we'll review some of the chapter's key terms. I'll give you the term and pause a few seconds while you mentally define it, and then I'll come back and state the definition. Ready? Question 1. What is trend analysis? Trend analysis is the study of a firm's past employment needs over a period of years, used to predict future employment needs. Question 2. Define qualifications inventories. Qualifications inventories are manual or computerized records listing employees' education, career, and development interests, languages, and special skills to be used in selecting inside candidates for promotion. Question 3. What is a recruiting yield pyramid? A recruiting yield pyramid is the historical arithmetic relationship between recruitment leads and invitees, invitees and interviews, interviews and offers made, and offers made and offers accepted. This analysis helps employers calculate the number of applicants they must generate to hire the required number of new employees. Question 4. What are personnel replacement charts? Personnel replacement charts are company records showing present performance and promotability of inside candidates for the most important positions. Question 5. What is a position replacement card? 
A position replacement card is a card prepared for each position in a company to show possible replacement candidates and their qualifications. Question six: What is an on-demand recruiting service? An on-demand recruiting service provides short-term, specialized recruiting to support specific projects without the expense of retaining traditional search firms. Question seven: Define ratio analysis. Ratio analysis is a forecasting technique for determining future staff needs by using ratios between, for example, sales volume and the number of employees needed. Question eight: What is a computerized forecast? A computerized forecast determines future staff needs by projecting sales, volume of production, and workers required to maintain this volume of output using software packages. Question nine: What is a scatter plot? A scatter plot is a graphical method to help identify the relationship between two variables, such as a measure of business activity like sales and your firm's staffing levels. Last one, question ten: Define employee recruiting. Employee recruiting means finding and attracting applicants for an employer's open positions. Good job. That's the end of this section. Section four, rapid review. Are you ready for the exam? Let's see. In this section, I'll give you a question and pause for just a few seconds before giving you the answer. Ready? Question one: What is employment or personnel planning? Employment or personnel planning is the process of deciding what positions the firm will have to fill and how to fill them. Question two: What are the three specific efforts important for recruiting minorities and women? The three efforts important for recruiting minorities and women are to understand the recruitment barriers, formulate required recruitment plans, and institute specific day-to-day -day programs. Question three: What is job posting? Job posting is the act of publicizing an open job to employees and listing its attributes, like qualifications, supervisor, working schedule, and pay rate. Question four: Why is centralized recruiting beneficial? Centralized recruiting is beneficial because it reduces duplication, makes it easier to spread the cost of technologies over more departments, builds a team of recruitment experts. And makes it easier to identify why recruitment efforts are going well. Question five: What is an application form? An application form is a job form that provides information about an applicant's education, prior work record, and skills. Question six: Name some forms of alternative staffing. Some forms of alternative staffing are temporary employees, in-house temporary employees, and contract technical employees. Question seven: What is college recruiting? College recruiting sends an employer's representatives to college campuses to pre-screen applicants and create an applicant pool from the graduating class. Question eight: What is the Welfare to Work program? The Welfare to Work program was established by the Federal Personal Responsibility and Welfare Reconciliation Act of 1996, and is designed to prompt employers to attract and assimilate former welfare recipients as potential job candidates. Question nine: What type of application form question should employers be aware of? For legal reasons, employers should be aware of questions dealing with education. Arrest records, emergency notifications, organizational memberships, physical handicaps, and marital and housing status. Last one, question ten: What are the two types of executive recruiters? 
The two types of executive recruiters are contingent recruiters and retained recruiters. That's the end of this section. This concludes the Vango notes for this chapter. We hope you found this audio review helpful. Be sure to check out other Vango notes for textbooks published by Pearson Education. Audible hopes you have enjoyed this.